What's going on everybody, Benji Kaiser here today, and today we're talking about the fact that you don't wanna learn graphic design the wrong way. This is gonna be a semi-casual video as far as recording style. If I do any bumps or bumbles along the way through, just hang in there with me. This is something that comes more from the heart than it does on just like this super thing that I just need to get absolutely right. I just wanna have a conversation with you. So sit back, relax. It's not gonna be too long of a video, but if you got a tea or a coffee, pull that up and let's just have a nice conversation. Comment below if you have any questions and I would love to answer those for you. So don't learn graphic design the, design the wrong way. W what do I mean by that? Well, the first thing I wanna talk about is the fact of kind of my background, like where I come from. And when I first started training as a graphic designer, this is over a decade ago and I was using CS2, so Creative Suite 2 from Adobe. This is back when they still sent it to you in a package of CDs and you put it in the side of your computer and loaded it onto your computer. And if you wanted to upgrade, you got to get the like upgraded version for like three to four hundred dollars the next time around. And so that's kind of where I started. So I started learning the tools as a graphic designer. I was learning Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign. And the interesting thing is I learned them in, in a very different order than I find most designers learn them today. When I learned the Creative Suite, I learned InDesign, then I learned Illustrator and Photoshop. The interesting thing is that I had an entire semester dedicated to InDesign, whereas with Photoshop and Illustrator, they were combined into one. And as a graphic designer, what I was doing at that time, that made a lot of sense to me. I was learning specifically how to be a print production graphic designer. Think about it, this is over a decade ago, digital was really just starting to become something serious. And unfortunately, I was not on the cutting edge of that learning um, that learning pattern. Um, I was learning more for print. The school I was going to, that was their, that was their big to-do. They were a big print design school. So that is really what I wanna talk about is are you learning the right things? Are you learning them the correct way? And are you learning historically accurate design? And so I wanna jump into that. My glasses are gonna come on and off because I got some notes here and I wanna make sure I get everything. Uh, I'm slightly digressing by talking about some different things in how I learned and what I learned first, but it's all gonna make sense as we dive through this video. So we're gonna talk about the four ways uh, to make sure that you're doing it right to equip yourself to learn the skills and get a job. Um, and because that's really the point uh, when you think about graphic design, you don't learn something just to learn it. You learn something so you can have a career, you can have you know, make money and do what you love. And so a lot of times um, people come to me and they say, you know, how can I become a graphic designer? Well, that this is kind of one of those videos that goes along this vein. Um, so first thing I wanna talk about is understanding why you are using a tool. So when I say a tool for graphic designers, that could be, you know, anywhere from a pen to a pencil to a Wacom tablet to a camera. Um, but right now in this video, I'm gonna specifically talk about the Adobe Creative Suite. So why would you use Photoshop, InDesign, or Illustrator? And I love this quote by Abraham Maslow. He says, uh, if, if the only tool, back up, I suppose it is tempting. If the only tool you have is a hammer to treat everything as if it were a nail. And I'm sure you've heard that quote. It's a very popular quote. Um, it's just talking about the guy who basically just runs around and say, that looks like a nail, that looks like a nail. And just, it starts to hit everything on the head uh, with a hammer rather than really thinking through, okay, what could be the best solution for the problem or the issue at hand? And that is really the key with graphic designers is we're problem solvers. And so I love this thought for Abraham Maslow because it's so true of many designers, how when all they know is Photoshop, and honestly, that's the first two that first tool that many graphic designers learn is Photoshop. And so when the only tool they have is Photoshop, they basically run around Photoshopping everything. And I don't mean like editing photos. I mean, they create layouts, they do business cards, they make logos, they do everything in Photoshop. And that is possible. And I think you can do that. Um, but the issue is it's not what the tool is made for. The tool is made for photo editing. The tool is made for you know, getting rid of blemishes on people's faces. The tool is made for digital painting. It's not used to create business cards. It's not used to create logos. And so when you're learning graphic design the wrong way, if you're taking your vision of graphic design, you're looking at graphic design to be inspired and then you're recreating it, but in the wrong set of tools, when you get into the professional industry and they say, hey, please create this business card, this logo, this digital design, um, whatever it might be, if you go to design a business card in Photoshop, 
that's that's just it's wrong. It's not that we're that you're being judged. It's not that it's not a good idea. It's well, it's not a good idea, but it's wrong. To where you know digital design can totally be in Photoshop, you know, because you're dealing with something that's going on a screen. And so the pixel quality doesn't have to be as perfect because you're gonna upload it as like 72 DPI anyway. So the point in saying this is you need to make sure you're using the right tools for the right applications. And if you're not learning design from somebody who has walked that road before you and is helping you and guiding you and instructing you along that path, then you're not getting the right guidance, mentorship, and education that you need. Right, the next thing is that it could definitely be said the same way as style, communication, and expression. Um, so if the only style and the only type of design you understand how to create is straight out of the Bauhaus with constructivism and cubism, um, then you only have a hammer. Your only style is a hammer. So you go around and somebody says, I need a logo. Great. Bauhaus logo, super simple shapes done. I need a layout. Great. Here's a layout. Here's text and here's a shape done, you know? And so you start to just hammer all of your clients into what you think they should do. And ultimately our goal as graphic designers is to communicate clearly the vision that they have and bring their ideas to life or bring their goals to life. And you know, through conversations, you can kind of pull them over to your side and help them see things in a different way. But ultimately you're having to communicate their ultimate goal. Um, that moves us into point number two, and that's understanding where you as a graphic designer came from. So who were the designers before you? Um, if I'm distracting you by looking at my notes, I just want to make sure I don't miss anything. So I apologize, but we're going to keep continuing here. So continue on the vein of art history. I want to stress the importance of knowing. That is really key, knowing. Uh, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. That's by George Santiana. Um, and he was basically saying that if you forget what happened, if you forget where you came from, you're doomed to repeat it because we're supposed to learn from past mistakes, our own or others. And repeating the past in graphic design is less about mistakes and more about being intentional with the style that you're using to communicate your message. I use this example in a video I recently did about a brief history in graphic design. And I talked about the importance of understanding the use of style and art movement in your pieces. Because let's say, um, I'm gonna throw up an image on the screen right now so you can kind of understand this, this idea. So this is an image from Alexander Rod, Rod, Ronchenko, Alexander Rodchenko, and he was a big part of the constructivist, constructivism movement coming out of the Russian communism regime uh, back when this piece was created. So if you use this style, as you see on the screen right now, you in a sense are pulling from those roots and you're using this Russian constructivism to communicate that sort of message. So whether you mean to or not, you're going to have remnants of those feelings and you're going to have remnants of those subconsciously in your design. Not because people maybe were in Russia or not because people, you know, see that and think, oh, Alexander Rodchenko. No, but what they see, what they feel is what was communicated through that work. And so you have to be careful when you're borrowing from the past, which I think you should do when you're becoming a designer. I think you should learn from the greats, but I think you should use it accurately. And so that's something that I think is very important is you need to pick an interest in graphic design history to understand where you came from, not to be a design history buff, not to impress your friends uh, with all your knowledge of design history, but just to understand how to apply the styles, techniques, and uh, movements of the past. So that's a little piece right there. All right, and point number three, fast and cheap will always cost you more than slow and valuable. Um, every day I have people asking me the best place to learn graphic design, uh, specifically where can I learn it cheap or free or you know, can you teach me graphic design for free, whatever it might be. Um, people are constantly trying to get to where they're going faster, which I very much respect. I think there's a lot of times where people need money, they need money now, or you know, they're in a pinch or they're trying to learn graphic design because they love it and they want to make a career out of it. But if you don't game plan for the long run, you're going to be a flash in the pan. If you don't understand how to learn an industry in depth and you're going to be a guy with a hammer running around, you know, doing Bauhaus minimalism, if that's all you know how to do and you know, just hitting things with hammers, your hammer of Photoshop, then you'll never understand how to grow with your industry. Because if you think about it, when graphic design started, they weren't using the Adobe suite. The Adobe suite did not exist. 
And so understanding the principles of design, understanding the roots of graphic design is what is absolutely important. Understanding how to use rhythm and balance, understanding the applications of the philosophy of design and how communication is the most important thing, not creative confusion. Um, and so fast and cheap is never as good as intentional and valuable. Um, and so um, one thing that I really want to stress is the need for a solid foundation. And that's something that will cost you time, it will cost you money. And so you can kind of think, okay, what can you do in this time frame where you're not making money for graphic design, but you're building a really strong skill set, a really strong portfolio to then when you're ready to step out, you're equipped to handle the tasks that come your way. Do you need to go back if you're, you know, 20, 23 years old and single, do you need to go back and live with your parents for a while and, and work on building your career? If you're, you know, married, do you need to keep working your day job and, and go back and learn this on the side at night? You know, what do you need to do to equip yourself for learning it, uh, the skill of graphic design very well? And this is something that I'm I'm really passionate about right now. I am planning on launching what I call the Nomad School of Design. Um, it's taking all that I believe has been really powerful in shaping me as a graphic designer and putting it into one online program where anybody can learn anywhere. So we will have graphic design history. We will have the principles, the philosophy, how to learn Adobe InDesign, Adobe Illustrator, Photoshop, if you want to get farther into, you know, digital design, we'll take a branch off into motion design and we'll take a branch off into Premiere Pro as the program develops. Right now, we're going to start primarily with graphic design. But before I continue, if that interests you, definitely head down into the description below. Click the link to join the Facebook group for the Nomad uh, School of Design because by expressing your interest by joining that group, that is going to put me in a place to actually do that for you guys. So if you want to learn graphic design um, from home, wherever you are, but learn it correctly, learn it well, um, then that is where I want to do that with you guys. Um, so that program is planning to be launched in the coming months with the amount of interest necessary uh, to not only make it uh, valuable for you, but sustainable and valuable for me. Because if I start this and can't follow through, then I've done you a false promise. And so by bringing enough people on, it will allow me to pursue it and help you. Um, you can also text design uh, dash, it's in the description, just check it out. We're just gonna keep moving through. I, I can't remember how to text it, but if you go down the description, you can text it. Or I'll throw it up on the screen as a slide. Um, so the obsession with cheap uh, ultimately is it will not build you into a capable graphic designer. You need the proper tools and you need to bring value. All right, point number four, don't copy, cut, and paste your design education. And this kind of falls along the same vein of the value of a good education as far as design is concerned. Um, learning from people who understand where you need to go and what it takes to get to the next step uh, and what you're interested in in growing your career. I have a ton of people ask me like, where can I find the best free resources and where can I find, you know, how to learn this or learn that. And I think that's very good. I think learning the tools is very effective, but ultimately if you don't have the whole package, you don't have the necessary foundation to grow in the long term. And so in a sense, it's that flash in the pan. It's, I learned the tools, I was on for a little while and then the industry got way ahead and, and I didn't, I wasn't equipped to continue in the industry. And I think one of the most important things uh, about learning from somebody, somebody investing in you and you investing in them, whether it's time or it's finances or it's services, whatever it might be, is that mentorship. Somebody guiding you along the path, teaching you what they learned, bringing you in with those little ins and outs and just little nuggets and nuances of what it takes to truly succeed. Um, the reason graphic design school was so effective for me, I got my bachelor's and my master's degree at a brick and mortar uh, college is because I had teachers and mentors there to say, this is where you need to go. This is how you need to be on the right path. And when you're just kind of cutting and pasting your own makeshift education together, you don't have those nuances and those super helpful insights that will truly get you to where you want to go in your career. Um, and so again, this is what I'm proposing with the Nomad School of Design is not only tools, not only philosophy, not only art history, not only principles, but mentorship and guidance so you can put yourself on a trajectory that will actually get you to where you're trying to go and accomplish the goals that you have set before you.
Um, so again, in the description below, you can check that out. Please comment, go to that group and ask me any questions that you would like. That's where I'm kind of gauging all of what's happening right now and the ideas and, and where it's going. And so I'm really excited about that. I wanted to bring this thought before you. I feel it's really important. People ask me a ton of questions about how to become a designer and what it takes. And that's really what's brought to life this idea of doing a complete online design school, not just some tutorials, um, not just some quick tips or, or tricks, but giving you a solid education. I'm Benji Kaiser at BenjiKaiser.com. Let me know if you like the videos like this. I'd love to produce more or different or more helpful. Um, I will see you here on the next episode. I thank you for working through me as I'm looking and taking off my glasses and doing different things. I like to be, this, be able to do these just casual videos sometimes. It's a lot less uh, stressful. So appreciate you guys and I'll see you in the next episode.